Hey guys, today I'm going to bring you along on my journey learning how to use Overset Meshing in OpenFoam. OpenFoam is a free CFD software package that uses the finite volume method. Uh, there's two main branches of OpenFoam, the OpenFoam Foundation branch and then the ESI group branch. The Foundation branch is the one that you get by using apt git install in any Linux distribution, but the ESI group version is the one that has Overset Meshing capability. To get that version, you'll have to download it from their website and either download the binaries or the source code and compile it. I've been using OpenFoam for a few years now and I really like it compared to other software, especially because it's open source. So you can use as many copies as you want without needing to pay for it. It helps a lot for if you're running on multiple cores because some softwares require that you pay license for each core that you run it on. OpenFoam has a lot of cool capabilities. It can do incompressible flow, compressible, combustion, hypersonics, transonic. It can model shock waves, uh, multi-phase flow, heat transfer. Just a lot of really cool stuff. I really recommend looking into it if you're interested. The Overset Grid or Chimera approach utilizes multiple mesh domains that encompass the entire computational domain. These meshes can overlap and allow a lot of flexibility in how the mesh is handled. Here you can see a propeller domain region that's rotating that's on top of a background mesh. Utilizing different mesh domains let you have more flexibility in transforming the meshes, uh, changing design, having local changes without having to recompute the whole mesh domain. It does this by interpolating between the mesh regions where they overlap. This allows you to mesh much more complex structures without having discontinuities in the mesh itself. Here's a block diagram I made to help explain the way to run an overset mesh simulation in OpenFoam. So we start in the top level directory just like most other OpenFoam simulations, but then we move into a subdirectory to form the overset mesh. I start with block mesh to form the background for that mesh. And then we take the STL of the geometry and extract the main features using surface feature extract. Then the STL of the geometry and the results from surface feature extract are both fed into snappy hex mesh to form the mesh. There's a lot of tutorials for this online if you don't know how to use it. Then we jump back up to the top level directory and then we form the background mesh using block mesh and snappy hex mesh. I use snappy hex mesh here to get a more refined region in the areas where I want more resolution. Then we use the merge meshes utility to merge the overset mesh and the background mesh together. And then we use topo set to get the cell regions and the cell zones. The cell zones are used by the motion solver and then the cell regions are used by set fields to assign zone IDs. The zone IDs are used by the overset solver to uh, run the simulation. That's what determines, that's how it determines what cells to interpolate, what cells are holes, and then what cells are calculated. Then everything is fed into the actual simulation. If you want to run in parallel, then you'll have to decompose the regions first with decompose par, and then you would run it with MPI. Otherwise, you can go straight into using your solver. In this case, I used over pimple dime foam, but there's a few other overset solvers you can use in open foam. Here's the structure for an overset mesh simulation in OpenFoam. There are other ways to arrange the directory structure, but this is how I set it up. The top level directory is the root of the project. Inside the top level directory is the system folder. Processor directories, if you're gonna be running it in parallel. A constant directory. A subdirectory that constructs the overset mesh. And the time directories, such as time zero, which contains the initial conditions and boundary conditions for the simulation. If you're running in parallel, majority of the time directories will be within the processor directories. But if you're running on a single core, they'll all be output into the master directory. Later on, when you finish the simulation, you can reconstruct all the time folders from the processor directory back into the top level directory, combining all the cores. A lot of times you'll have to do this if you're running the post-processing utility after you're finished with the simulation. The subdirectory is set up similarly to the top level directory, but without the processor directories as the mesh is constructed on a single core. You could construct the mesh in parallel, but I just did it on a single core. 
the system folder contains all the dictionary definitions required to run the various open foam solvers and utilities similarly in the sub directory but you'll notice that there's less dictionaries because we're running less utilities we're just constructing the mesh uh, the constant folder contains data related to the mesh such as your mesh and then domain definitions in the sets folder which uh, the dynamic mesh stick uses to determine what regions it's moving and it also contains various properties related to your simulations such as turbulence properties and transport properties of the fluid in my case here's an example of how my structure is set up i have the top level directory with the name of the project i'm running the initial time directory zero which contains all of my files for the initial conditions and boundary conditions the constants folder which contains my mesh and the sets for that mesh post-processing folder which is formed through the post-processing utility uh, if you're running like force coefficients during the simulation my four processor folders as i used four cores to run the simulation my subdirectory which was used to form the overset mesh so inside constants i have the tri surface which contains the stl the geometry which in this case is the propeller i want to rotate the poly mesh which is the actual mesh that was formed from the tri surface and then a folder containing files related to the extended uh, feature ext the surface feature extract utility which is used to help snappy x mesh snap the mesh onto your stl geometry and then the systems folder and then i made a times folder to just group all of my stuff better my first attempt at a simulation was sort of a bust i used a rans k epsilon model but it had poor iteration performance and i didn't really understand how to set up the overset mesh properly for the second simulation i worked on getting some of the dynamics to play out better the performance was better i used higher relaxation factors but it still wasn't very good here you can see the velocity ISO surfaces for the second simulation in the background. There's a few times where it just jumps in the middle and some of the ISO surfaces are discontinuous. For the third simulation, I ran 16 cores on an AWS server to test out cloud computing. Uh, I had too uniform of a mesh density throughout the whole domain, so I really wasted resources. It didn't end up being worth the run, but I did learn a bit about running on AWS. The fourth simulation, I brought it back to my own PC. It was a little bit better. Um, still not the best. Here's some velocity ISO services in the background. The fifth simulation was a lot better. I got a lot more data out of it. I changed the geometry to get rid of some high velocity areas in the center. And throughout the duration of the simulation, I kept increasing the crowd number to speed up the simulation. This ended up biting me because about halfway through it started diverging. As you can see from the Q contours, it just starts exploding around the propeller. Another issue was that I realized that I spelt cell zone wrong when I was trying to set up getting only the propeller to rotate. So in this example, the entire domain is rotating along with the propeller, which is not very accurate. So here's some a slice of the domain in the background. Uh, there's some velocity vectors being shown as well, and you can see that over time it just slowly explodes. And you can see the density of the vectors is shrinking and growing. That's from the entire domain rotating, not just the propeller's domain rotating. The sixth and final simulation came out a lot better. I played it safer with speeding it up and I applied the cell zones correctly. So you'll see later that only the propeller is spinning. The actual background mesh is not rotating anymore. Uh, I have a lot more data from this one that I'm going to show and I have some post processing from the end with force coefficients to show the estimated shaft power and uh, thrust being produced by the propeller. With the velocity ISO services, some patterns start to form at the propeller tips, and I'm not sure if this is an artifact of the simulation or if it's a physical effect from turbulent wake. Here's a slice with the velocity vectors. 
I'm also showing an ISO surface of the vorticity from the propeller. Here's the same vorticity, but as a slice. You can see the center region is moving a lot slower than the outside region. Here with the turbulent viscosity, you can see an interesting artifact where as the cell sizes change suddenly, the magnitude of the turbulent viscosity increases. So here I need to smooth out the sudden change in cell size. Here's a chart of the estimated thrust produced by the propeller and the required shaft power to spin the propeller. You can see that with a fitted trend line that the values are slowly increasing upwards. So the simulation probably needed quite a bit longer to converge. Also from the amount of variance in the parameters, either there's a lot of turbulence from this geometry or the residuals from the simulation are jumping around a lot. And here's some simulated values from eCalc for a similar size propeller. The estimated shaft power from open foam is pretty close to the estimated electrical power from ECOC when you take into account the efficiency of the motor. However, the value for the thrust estimated by open foam is pretty different from the estimated thrust in ECOC. There's a few reasons why this could be different. One, ECOC is also an approximation. Two, I didn't let my simulation run for long enough to converge to a good solution. And three, the geometry I'm using in open foam definitely isn't the same as the geometry in eCalc for the propeller I chose, especially since I just made a random propeller design to test over set meshing. Overall, this was a pretty interesting project to learn how to use over set meshing. My main goal for this was getting propeller interactions on aircraft so that I could include propellers into my aircraft simulations. I usually run steady state simulations to evaluate aircraft designs for my RC planes but I really wanted to include some sort of dynamics with the simulations so that I could see how the propellers are changing the flow field around the aircraft, especially with high lift devices deflected. I hope you all enjoyed the results. If there's any questions, I can always make a follow up or reply in the comments. I definitely recommend checking out OpenFoam because this is a great software with a lot of really good capabilities. Thanks for watching.